the the shimmers that you guys had um, yeah experienced out in part of the swamp out here um, it just reminds me of the of the skinwalker ranch of the of the guy that had all these uh, different issues coming up on his property and uh, he had from Bigfoot to UFOs to um, these uh, wolves that he shot at point point blank that wouldn't wouldn't die yeah. and uh, and one of the parts of the book it, it was talking about the uh, this gentleman that uh, heard this news in the in this uh, somehow through the grapevine and he was supposed to be some naturalist and was going to be one with the uh, property and come out there and mm -hmm. uh, just lay out in this field like naked and do whatever he does to be one with the property and uh, as the owner the owner was watching this guy out there in the field and he's like what a nut you know he's <laughs> this guy is crazy yeah. and uh, at that moment they saw this thing come rushing out of the out of the wood line and they couldn't make out what it was because it was uh, it was kind of like a shimmer and it ran up to this guy the guy didn't see it ran up to this guy and just made this god awful loud roar scared this guy crazy Jump, he jumps up, runs back to his car, fully naked, jumps in his car and hauls butt off the property and never seen again. Now, they didn't realize what they saw, yeah. the owners. They're saying, what the hell was that, you know? Until weeks later on, they're sitting there watching this movie called Predator. Oh. And they're watching this Predator, the movie Predator, and watch this, the Predator. How so it, they... So, turns, so they have no idea of what Predator was all about in the until, movie. Yeah, not until that it actually in that movie Predator that um, it turned, it did that that shimmer, you know, where it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And you know much what you saw. You, you know, saw. and and do they all do that? I don't know if they do that or not. All or or is it even a Bigfoot, so to speak? You know, right, I mean, right. you know, could not be. Could be something else. Uh, I don't know what. What could be these, this, uh, what do they call it, the shimmer and, or uh, cloaking or? Well, yeah, I mean. What have you? But, you know, uh, the funny thing is, you know, I haven't got, I haven't seen this, not in our area, but I know Mark had I haven't said, either, yeah. Yeah, you know, I have not gotten eyes on on anything that like that yet, but I know Mark has, mm -hmm. and we've ran, we've ran to where we've seen these things, or where he said he saw it. We've gotten, we've gotten grunts. And that in that one video, like I said, we were we were surrounded by knocks, and it was like some of the most amazing, short of being yelled at or an actual sighting face to face, it was it was awesome. It was just spectacular, you know. And like I said, um, and I've said it before over and over again, you know, is is the other stuff, right? Is all the other stuff, okay? And what I mean by that is that is. Like what? The what is the stuff. not not? What is the not traditional things? Yeah, the, yeah. The traditional things we call would be stuff up, stuff being thrown at you, sightings, uh, the sounds, the, the knocks, sounds uh, being screamed yells, at, the yells, calls, yells, the whistles, yells, whistles, whoops, um, stick breaks, slamming sounds, and the thumps, the thuds, you know, yeah. heavy footfalls, stuff like that. Those are what we call always the traditional things, and the. Yep, I heard it. What was that just now? Right over there. Mm -hmm. It was right over there. Yeah. Oh, it was a falling out of a tree. And then the and then the other things is what we just call the other stuff. And what I mean by the other stuff is hearing mumbling sounds, hearing vocals, uh, off in a distance, and also so close that you should be able to see something standing there. Okay? We've had stuff that just breathed and exhaled. Mm -hmm literally just wrapped right behind us and we both spun around and looked to just see nothing there okay and those are the th those are the things that are what i call the the other stuff the the shimmering sightings of bodies moving around um it is it is the stuff that you know that you get ridiculed for it is the stuff that you get ridiculed for but I can't dismiss it. No, what, I just cannot can't, dismiss can't, this. You can't dismiss it because what we do, what we're doing here is we're doing Sasquatch research. We're investigating areas. On the same token, though, 
there's yeah. what else is out there that other people do there's you know there's other paranormal stuff and this is We've even said, is it haunted? I mean, dude, well, it could be. It we've could even, be. Yeah. We've, I've went back yeah. to Mark many times and said, Mark, is this place freaking haunted? Yeah. If it's I not mean, Bigfoot, what else could it be? Exactly. You know, and you're out there, you know, you're like, Squatch. You can't say this is you're Bigfoot like, doing this. Though, you're like, you're, you're like, okay, uh, it's like Squatch that. on the brain. You're hearing things. It's your imagination. Right. No, but when my audio recorder captures it, it's not my imagination then no more. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you something also. This has not came out. This has not came out on on TV yet. Okay, but when when Nightline came down to us, all right, I'll say it right now. Okay, I don't know if you knew about this or not. No. When Nightline came out and did us and filmed us and everything, we had a, a film crew and everything following us around. It was. It was like a, a squatcher's dream, mm -hmm. having people following you around filming you. This is what happened, okay? This is what happened on one short brief. We had just got done standing out of spot, and then we shifted, and then we heard something crash in behind us. Right. They all spun their heads around. Right. Whether the camera was rolling or not, I don't know. They all spun their heads around and looked, and looked at me. They looked right at me and said, what was that? And I said... <laughs> Well, I said, it sounds to me like they just want to let us know that they are following us. They got an idea of where we are. Right. And so they were like, well, what does it mean? I said, well, better yet, it just landed where we just came from, which is just right over there. Right. But what happened was was um, the reporter, I won't say her name, the reporter from ABC News, uh, walked just a little bit ahead of us. Okay, She walked just a little bit ahead of us, mm -hmm. and she stood by herself. And I was with the producer. Mark was standing right next to me, right. uh, and the, the the camera guy that was there with us. And then she pipes up and she says, oh, oh, "Like that," and she comes she comes darting back, and she says, "I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it." And I said, "I just look." And here I am. It's 95 degrees, people. I'm freaking dying of heat out here, right? And I'm sweating it out. And I, I just I just kind of grinned down. I'm like, I'm like. Well, what did you hear? And she said, it was, it was mumblings. She said, it was mumblings. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't know what I just got done hearing, but it was just right over there. And I said, well, I said, we can go get it. We can go. I was like, we can go run in there. We can go chase after whatever. Okay, but she, uh, she adamantly did not want to pursue it. And the producer... The producer asked her if she wanted to say that on camera, and she, and I got respect for this lady. This lady went on camera and <laughs> said it. So whether it ends up on TV or not, I don't know. But here's something you don't know. <laughs> right after that. <laughs> Moments after this, mm -hmm. and this is the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Moments after this, Mark and the reporter almost steps on a big old water moccasin. I mean, we were we were like a foot away from it. Almost, wow. almost on it. Wow. Okay. We didn't say anything there. They were all excited about the snake and everything like that. Mark and I kind of sort of knew better. Okay. Because number one, number one, we hardly ever see moccasins and no. snakes uh -uh. in our active area. And never. what I mean by that is, once we get off trail, we are in the active area. Okay. We're surrounded by woods and vegetation, and that's what I mean, the area. We do not see hardly ever any frogs. We hardly ever see squirrels, snakes, raccoons, possums. Lizards. All the typical wildlife is normally always gone, Nothing. okay? And then this lady almost runs into a water moccasin, okay? And Mark and I looked at this and said, Chris, do you think those vocals, okay, this speculation, Chris, do you think they were warning us of the snake? Or do you think they were mentioning amongst themselves that we were getting ready to walk into a snake? Could be, or maybe the thing could have thrown it we don't, in no, your direction. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe it didn't want you in well, there. We well, we had yeah. crossed the creek. We, yeah. had just got, we had just crossed the creek, and that's when we hit right. the snake almost. Yeah. So the voices were on this side of the creek. There was a creek in between us, and we were already on this side. 
So that is the other stuff. Oh, yeah, it's the other stuff. So see, here's the beauty of it is the beauty of it is this. The beauty of it is this. This lady don't know anything about Sasquatch. She don't know anything about anything no. about Bigfoot. Nothing. And she comes out and she bears witness to even hearing the mumblings. Yeah. Herself. Yeah. Herself. So that's what I she's call. She's a very educated woman. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's a. Uh, Educated in Princeton, has a very established career. We looked her up. Yeah, and we looked her up. We, she's been everywhere all over the world. I, mean, I won't mention her name, but that's just a little bit about what happened when ABC Nightline came out. Well, this yeah. is the stuff you... That was awesome. This is the stuff you run up in when you're doing any kind of research out in the field. You're going to run across weird stuff. Well, the, with the movie Predator, you often wonder, oh, how, do, how does someone think of these, uh, these ideas? <laughs> uh, are they are they are they getting this information? Are they doing their research? Hey, we need something really freaky to, you know, make this this creature be awesome. Are yeah. they getting their information or they hear from, from real live accounts? From real live accounts from from people that say, hey, well, I'll tell you a story. What happened to me? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and uh, of course, then movie magic makes it happen. But. Um, I just, you know, I'm just. It, these are amazing things. It's, it's one of the we we work on. We work in a field where there's a very large table, and on that large table, you just have to throw stuff on it, like you don't know, and you have to come back to it. Oh. And um, this but, this but, is one of the things that it, is, know, okay. This is what I experienced. Yeah. You got to throw it on the table. Yes. And then you can put these. You try to puzzle these pieces exactly. back together. And I, mo and I mostly explain it like this when I tell people this. I'm like, you know, most people get into this stuff because they've had a sighting or their friend had a sighting. And I call it like this. It starts off as in a physical flesh and blood type thing. You start off like that. Mm -hmm. And then as you get more diligent with it and you get more passionate with it, things start changing. And this is what's happened, this is what's happened to us, okay? Um, physical, physical sighting happened years ago when I was a young guy, years ago, uh, a kid, you know. Um, we start going out and doing this stuff, and we start coming back with physical, the physical traditional things, mm -hmm. okay? Yep, we have an active area. Yes, this is in agreement with other researchers across North America. You know, yep, this is, this is an active area. We got, you know, short of having pizza and beer with one of these guys, yeah, this is an active area because it's all confirmed and the audio and the video footage that you get and stuff like that and you'll have faces sometimes in your videos. I don't just take a face in the video. I tell people I have to have another sense. I have to have hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to hear the grunt, the movement, the something going on. I just don't pick a face in my video and say, yeah, that's a Sasquatch. Me personally, I got to have a reason of why the camera went that direction, okay? Exactly. And if I catch a a a gorilla a gorilla looking thing in the video, mm -hmm. and you can see the nostrils and the cheeks and the little small thin lips, you know, and I'm telling you, I heard the thumps and the thuds going on. I'm gonna say, yep, that's a hit, mm -hmm. okay? Is it gonna be better than the Patterson Gimlin film? No, because it's not a full body shot, walking away, blah, blah. Uh -huh. But it just confirms to you that they're, that for least, sure this least, is there. But at least you try to get closer to it. Yes, well, you try if your 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 fear says get the heck away. Yeah, but you got to combat that fear. You just got to, this is what we're doing. This is what we do. Yeah, you know, you, you, have, you have to find a way to get in close. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's, yeah. that's the biggest problem with a lot of people is they, that fear stops them and they want to go, okay, let's leave. I don't want to get no closer. No, well, no, you need to get closer. Mm -hmm. I mean, two things are going to happen. One is going to run from you or, or get or disappear or whatever, or it's going to come after you. And, uh, and it's had plenty of chances. There's only that. two things that it'll do. It'll yes. either run from you or come at you. Either or, either way. Or lure you away. <laughs> either way. All right. Either way, you're going to get it either on film. Either they're running away from you or coming at you. So what would you? What, That's if it's something physical. If it's something, well, physical or not. <laughs> if it's if, if if it's still coming at you, you can hear it. Just stay, just stand there. Yeah. Video anyway. it. Now, how strong are your nerves? Are you going to stand there and, and to take be it? able to endure? Because your right. your body says flee. Right. Yeah. That's that's 
because that's where it separates boys from men. Mol most all researchers, oh, this research. most all researchers have this vivid picture in their head, and the head, is, the picture is my head being twisted off my body, uh, or my arms being torn loose from me, and I'm being beaten with my arm. Let me ask you this: you know, I think most people have this thought in their head. You know? Do you think? Oh my. What does Sasquatch look look like to you in your head? What would it look like I, to me? I guarantee it's not going to... Probably won't look like Patty. No. Huh? No. Okay. Well, you know, when you... There's, there's different variations. Well, of course, there's different, different There's different types of... Uh, there seems like there's... Uh, well, we've had we've had video footage come back that we've stopped dead in our tracks. We looked over there because we heard the mumblings. You look back in the video footage and you see something that looks human-like. Mm -hmm. In the area that you heard the mumblings, there's something looking at you looks human-like, and you're like, "Oh, damn!" You know, we know that's that's freaking. So Mark goes out there, and we figure out this was probably eight feet tall. Okay, rationalize. You go, "How in the world do you not see something eight feet tall standing there, peeking through the palmettos, looking at you?" <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. My ass is getting burnt almost. Um, oh. So, but, move but what I'm there. saying to you is... Yeah, is I can but, this way, I bet. But what I say to you I is... I want you burned. Yeah. And what I say is this. Um, you know, I've, I sit there and come up with these ideas and everything about what it all could be and everything like that. And, and I sometimes think that makes you get too, too deep into the rabbit hole. Um, I don't think you can classify it as being one thing until... You, you see yes. the vastness of what all of them are. Or yes. Or, or is, of it. are the capabilities different? Right. Okay. Or is the other stuff and the traditional Bigfoot, is it the same thing? Is it not the same thing? Is it something different? I've used this analogy before of... Sometimes the activity we get, and I'm going to try to explain it to you. Sometimes the activity that we get, I explain it like this. We hear the traditional things that are going on around us. We know for sure we get activity. And then we get this spooky, freaking, creepy, bizarre stuff that starts happening. And it seems like the only conclusion I can kind of come up with to try to fathom what's going on is that it seems like there's something else in the picture that's around. Just track with me on this. Like, you see, like there's a Bigfoot here, obviously, one or two or three, and then there's something controlling the situation that you cannot see. Okay? As in, like, um, you know, I don't always want to use the word extraterrestrial or something like. I don't want to use the word tele. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want it. In other words, like a school, like a school kindergarten schoolyard. Okay, you can see all the kids playing, but you don't see where the teacher is. But the teacher is in charge of the school ground. All the children playing. But always has their eyes on it. Yes, it seems like we always have something that's kind of on the paranormal side that is overwatching the activity and you're going to say well Chris how can you say that because my, my friend my friend Mark says what the heck is that this right what the heck is that I just got done seeing and then it just takes off and it's not to be seen no more well, let but me... yet the knocks continue but yet the knocks will continue well let me offer another it's weird scenario suppose it is something that has holy cow what is that Okay, so Christine, if I can ask you a, a, a question, a personal question, maybe if you want to share, it's fine. Okay. If you don't, that's okay. Um, so, in regards to the the Bigfoot phenomena, okay, what do you think it is? Where do you where where do you stand? Where do you stand? Okay, well, I've been out with people on both sides. The people who think it's strictly an animal, and the people who think it's a totally paranormal being. I personally, I'm a Christian, I'm a fundamental Baptist, mm -hmm. and I think that somewhere along the line, yeah, there was the fall, that they are very much like us as humans, which is why they can talk and 
have conversations in language. Okay. And that they have a very physical component to them. I think they also may have something of the not extraterrestrial but supernatural. I think that they have a limit to how much activity they can produce. Like if they're going to be totally corporeal, then they can only do a limited amount of things. But if they want to be more more of the spiritual or the yeah, spiritual not not in a body, then they can mumble and they can do wood knocks and they can create a lot of activity, even um, footprints yeah. and noises and all sorts of things. But I think they're limited on how much activity they can produce. Okay, so uh, David, yes, my idea. What you've been doing this a long time, bro. <laughs> okay, you've been doing this a long time, so definitely great to hear what people think think is going on from people that's been doing this for a long time okay so let, let's ask David David what what is it what is the what is the I wish, I wish I can put my finger on it and tell you what exactly it is but I, can, I can't yeah. um, I, when I started this I 100% flesh and blood still kind of am until I see something different yeah other than that um, I, didn't, I have never witnessed what you guys witnessed. I've heard of what other people witnessed about these things cloaking in and out. Can can some of them do it? That's yeah, possible. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, some can't, maybe. So uh, you're like a realist. I'm a realist. As uh, in like, I'm just going to go with however I see reality before exactly. my before my very eyes, yeah. and I'm going to keep a logical approach to it. Exactly. That's um, kind of how I've done it, too. And, you know, just to sit here and say, you know, this is what they are, this, it's kind of absurd because we, we really don't know what they are. Have you heard mumblings that you don't, that just, you don't, that you don't see? Well, I'm talking about mumbling so close that you should definitely be able to get a visual. Oh, yeah. You, I, I have never had that, but if we were to hear something like that, like right now, you should be able to see it. Um, yeah. If you don't, then it's one of those things that you... Like I say, you have to put it on that table and say, okay, yeah. well, I experienced this. I don't know what it is. I can't say this is where, what I believe it is because you don't know where it came, came out of left field somewhere. So yeah. You don't know. You know, that's one of those things. You deal that, with it when you get it, and it's just reality. Yeah. You just kind of gauge it as you Because if you say you this is what it is, someone like myself is going to say, well, how can you explain it? Well, how it? you justify that, how Chris? You justify You're it. hearing mumblings. You know, if you I've can. been told sound can go from miles away, Chris, and yeah. this and that thing. And I'm like... Uh, no, not really, because uh, 50 years old, I kind of know what sound sounds like, and I kind of <laughs> sort of know what it sounds like when I'm hearing somebody just maybe five yards away from me, and I don't see nothing there. I do know they are intelligent. You know. They are super fast. They're both. And they can outwit us in anything we try, and they have. And um, What about mind speed? Never experienced it yet? Never experienced it yet. Neither heard, have I. Heard people that had that happen to them. I've never had it happen to me. Um, uh, is it off the table? No, you can't put it off the table because, you know, it's, it's happened to somebody. Yeah. David, have you ever person. got mixed up? Have you ever went in the woods and then confusion. got lost and came out? Disorientation, confusion. Disorientations? Um, only for a brief moment just to figure out what direction I need to to get back out of an area. Oh, that sounds kind of normal. Or zapping. Yes, normal this thing. zapping, they call it zapping. Never got the zapping. No. How about the ominous feeling? Feeling the uh, sudden feeling of dread. I never had that. I've got the sudden feeling of, of a little bit of fear of like, you know, you're, you're out there hiking like I do a lot of times by myself in mm -hmm. the areas. And sometimes I'll get to a spot where it's just dead quiet. And it's you almost feel like pressure, like in the area. You need to hurry up and leave. Pressure type uh, thing. Pressure like you know like you have you know like uh, a sense of okay, it's I'm not feeling right. I got to I, I got to keep moving on or, or leave this area yeah. and just go somewhere else. Um, but not not like a flight where I had to run and get the heck out of Dodge or anything. It's just an uneasy feeling that you got. Have you ever had? No, I've had this before. And I've shared it with some people and some, and some not. And I haven't said it before, I don't think, on uh, publicly. Um, 
I would have very ominous feelings of dread all the way the day before. The day, be the day before I knew I was going to go out. And I would have feelings of dread, like I'm dreading to go out there. Yeah. But for some reason, I go out there. I mean, it's like it defies kind of common sense. A lot of people. And I get, and I need to get this like, no, I'm not kidding people. I just would feel these dread things. You and must probably feel like a little depression too, probably, because all your senses are being hit at once because of something that you felt out there. Um, well, when we came across the skunk ape odor that one day, that skunky odor that one day, I felt panicked. Yeah. I just felt kind of, I mean, I just felt panicked. And I cut the video all up and everything like that. The video was running. Um, we just had this, I just had this feeling like we just need to hurry up and get out of here. Okay. So we hurried up and left and we had a small boy uh, named Drake with us that one day. And this was over two years ago. Um, and we got out of there and we left. Okay. I didn't see anything on camera until a lady contacted me from Alaska and her name is Penny. She said, I can hear them. They're there. And I said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I don't hear anything. And so she gave me the timestamps. And I said, oh, my God, this lady, she's correct. I'm hearing what she's talking about now. And then it hit me. I said, let me go back to the one video. Let me go back to the one video where I knew something was close. But I didn't see anything with my eyes. And I went back to that one video where we had the skunk, the skunk odor. And I tell you right now, people, as the camera, as the camera was panning like that, something, something in the back does like this. Whoop, turns it, something just like turns it head, ducks down. And I'll get my butt burned on the fire. Something did a head turn and pulled down and goes behind the palmetto the, the slits. You can see the black pulling down below the slit, okay? It was filmed with a GoPro camera. It's not great on quality, people. It is what it is. There was something with a red, or a round shape of a head ducking, what I call the tuck and duck. Tuck and duck. Tuck and duck, whoop, <laughs> duck, duck, tuck, whoop, tuck, and duck. Yeah. And when I think Oh, and we went back out there. We went back out there to gauge the height. We estimated, what, seven feet? Yeah, around seven. We estimated whatever tucked and duck was seven feet tall. Yeah. Okay? Seven feet tall. You wouldn't think something that big would move that fast. No. But. And to sit there and think that something seven feet tall was just was just ten yards away from me in the freaking bush, right. you can kind of wonder why my ominous feelings were coming around. Yeah. You well, know? I will say this. Uh, if, if it... If it does fall in the lines of something spiritual or in the realms of, like Christine was saying, fallen angels, they, people, a lot of people don't understand that when, uh, in, when the angels were cast down to earth because of them following Satan, is that yeah, the, rebe the rebellion? Yeah. The rebellion, that they didn't lose any of their powers. And supposedly they breeded they with were man. Just, they were cast out of the heavens down to earth. Mm -hmm. And so if if these things... Well, supposedly they bred with man. Exactly. So, so well, even if they... Some of them didn't. If, if we're dealing with something that has these certain powers, hopefully we're not. But uh, I don't know. Here, it... They've had numerous opportunities to rip my arms off and beat me up with them and stuff like that, and that hasn't been done yet because I'm still here, but, you know. But they, they can't physically do that to us. Yeah. If you're talking about I think, falling angels because... Yeah, because yeah. you should have the protection of, you know, yeah. of God. Yes. Because. Now, I will say this, okay? When you, when you just put the whole spectrum together with all the things you have personally experienced, you know, I will say this, okay? There is more to the Bigfoot phenomena than just flesh and blood, okay? And I will justify that. I justify it with my personal observations and my personal experiences. And I'm similar with David as far as being like a realist. You know, you, you'll see it to believe it, or you don't believe it till you actually experience it. 
But see, the thing is this. Well, what happens when you finally do experience that? All your idea leading up before, up to that moment, was wrong. <laughs> I mean, what do you, you know, how do you tell that to yourself, you know? So that's kind of how I see it. I say there's more to it than just flesh and blood. And only because of my personal experiences and, and Mark's as well. And it is, the rabbit hole is very deep indeed. And you have to be careful how deep you get into that rabbit hole. Because there's a lot of funky weird stuff with this thing. It's just very bizarre at times.